Oh, I have just had the most amazing conversation with Steve, my friend Steve, who I've gotten to know through Forward Link, uh, the Akimbo workshops. We've never been in a workshop together, but um, somebody, well, Matthew, who's also on here, he hooked us up, and I just love Steve. And we have also been speaking about the body and dancing and bare feet and what you can do and art, because Steve is an amazing artist. And this is actually one of those shows that I would say go find it on YouTube and and kind of scroll towards the you know 45 minute mark or something because Steve is showing some of his recent art from a retreat that he just did with his family um I'll put some of those in the show notes as well so that you can check it out so have fun with me and Steve hi Hi, it's good to see you. Very it good to see so, you. It is so good to see you too. Yeah. So we're just Great. back from we're just back from our our annual two week break where we go. Let me turn this off. That's better. We're back from our we're back from our annual two week break where we as a family go and uh, get completely off the internet. No screens, no movies, no TV, no radio, no news for two weeks. We go up to a, a part of the mountains here in North Carolina in the United States, and we um, hike a lot, cook, have conversations, and read a ton of books. I bring mm -hmm. a small art studio with me, and I paint a bunch of stuff while I'm up there, little small stuff. but um, And that's what we do for two weeks. And so we're just back from that. It, was the, it ended this last weekend. So, so that's, that's pretty wonderful. Um, it sounds puts, absolutely lovely. Yeah, it usually puts us in a different frame of mind about everything. We come back and it's like, mm -hmm. it's just, it, you know, we used to go one week and it wasn't long enough to really, you don't really wind all the way down in one week. It's like you wind down to the middle of the vacation and then you start winding back up again mentally to go back to work or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it would be like Wednesday. Mm -hmm. With two weeks, it's like a whole week of winding down. You get a whole lot farther down before you start trying to come back up. It really, it's made a huge difference. We've done it 28 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's very cool. Lovely. Cool. So, but do you have electricity and water and sort yeah, of we all the modernities? I mean, there's, there's even a router in the, in an internet in the house. Okay. We, but uh, you just, we just, you don't, just don't. Yeah. Mm. There were TV screens in two of the rows. We never turned them on. Mm. Right. So we're just, right. We just, it's all old fashioned. We're all walking around the house with books and bookmarks. It's lovely. Did you read any good books? Um, I read a Terry Pratchett book, which was mm -hmm. entertaining. I read, uh, Go going postal, which I had never read before. It's marvelous. It's now probably one of my three favorites of his after reading that. Um, I read the gift by Lewis Hyde, mm -hmm. um, which was, uh, good for me. Good for me. There were some things in there that really, I had not thought about that way before I needed to. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, I think that's it for me because most of my time I spent with a brush in my hand if I wasn't hiking. So rather than reading, the other the other folks in the house read a whole lot more than I did. So, so who was it? You and your wife and the, our two sons, and are were there for the whole two weeks, and then uh, our daughter came with her fiance for the first week. So there were six of us for the first week, and we got to know him better, which was great. Lovely. So huh. changes. So. Yeah, and it is like I've done, I do regular like 24-hour digital Sabbaths where, you know, I can go like completely kosher, sort of, you know, nothing. Right. Or now and again, it's like, okay, but I can use my, my Spotify on the phone because in the old right. days I had a record player, you know, right. so I, I, I kind of do that, but whenever I do what I do stay off of social media, I basically yeah. don't, you know, I don't watch TV or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've had, I've had, um, 
you know, two, three weeks off of social media now and again, or, you know, it's like, so I, I play around with that as well, but it sounds lovely to kind of do it as a, as a, as a retreat almost, you know, yeah. you guys go away and, and yes, you know, yes, we get into a completely different setting and we deliberately time it to, um, get the best color, the best autumn color here in the North Carolina mountains. So that's when mm -hmm. we always go with the same time and that's why, because the colors are amazing. Um, yeah. and they were good this year too. So they were good this year too. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, so much of what's been going on with me, I mean, you know, this from probably even the stuff with the bears, right? The, the pain, the bears painting. Um, I've been on this journey for a year and a half now, I guess, where I'm trying to tear apart or understand the different, different approaches to producing art or creating anything for that matter. And, um, what's been eye opening for me and it's, it's, it comes out in the gift as well. Lewis hides mm -hmm. the gift is that there's a. There are two ways into, into doing creativity. You can come and to use Lewis Hyde's terms, you can either come on the, the Eros side, the, he, he refers to it as the erotic side, but it's not really about the normal term erotic or erotic art. It's, it's meant to be heart. You're coming in with, from the heart and you come in, maybe not rational, maybe not verbal. You're coming in instead in a more whole body and you're, and that's where he talks about the gift and the gift economy and the gift, the gift um, uh, exchange and the fact that talent and the skills that you have as an artist, to some extent come as a gift to you. And then you work on them. That's the other side, which he calls logos. It's the word side. It's the, it's the rational side. It's the left brain, the right brain, right? It's the, so, you know, it's just one more way of looking at this. That was really helpful for me because I've been on this long journey of trying to figure out how do I get more spontaneity, more um, more of my body, not my mind into the work. And how do I let it drive the work? How do I let it start the work? Um, William Kent Ridge's six drawing lessons was another important piece that got dropped in about two months ago, three months ago by, a, a one of the pro workshop, uh, alumni that I've kept up with, um, Sean Barlow over in Wales, who, um, suggested that to me. And I read that. And he talks about being in the studio and being stupid hmm. and allowing a lot of room for, um, uh, what's he call it? Uncertainty, hmm. right? So you start out creating images and you're not even sure what they're going to be. That's kind of a weird way to work. I mean, a lot of people can't imagine that you would, you know, put a canvas on the wall and start working and have no idea where you're going, but, but that's, that's where the most interesting work comes from. And more and more, that's the way I've been moving. So the, the retreat this year was another, another set of steps toward that. Um, as I realized that, it, you know, this is going to sound weird, but I've, I've discovered how to find images by dancing yeah. in the studio. Dancing. No, no music, that. no music, no words. I, I just, that. I just free form. Dance in the moved. studio. It's not a very big space either. It's only a 10 by 12 room, right? So there's not much room here. But, you know, I just kind of close my eyes and move my body and let my body do whatever it wants to do. And I'm just, you know, whirling and twirling in the middle of the thing, getting busy and stuff. And images will come into my head while I'm doing this. And I'm like, this is just kind of strange. Uh, and it's one of those things that I got, I got told dur during some of the depth psychology work I've been doing, I got told pretty clearly dude, you need to listen to your body more. And I was like, well, how do I do that? And dance was one of the things that was actually suggested from up in, and I don't dance. So I know I've got, I can't dance. You, yes, my, you oh, do. My wife and I have tried. <laughs> well, I do now, but it's weird. You but do. anyway, I can't, I can't like social dance. <laughs> but it's so, so interesting to hear this. I had a, I had a therapy session on Monday with Dominic and I was telling him about last week's Lindy Hop lesson, right? So there was this one guy that I danced with for the first time, a little round dude. Man! Right? So good. Right? So good. It was right. just so clear. He, his leading was just so clear. And 
I I kind of know that you know Lindy Hop works for me. I'm I'm quite good at it. I need to work on on listening for the leads rather than preempting uh-huh. them, and that's been a journey. And I've gotten better, right? But I was telling him, man, you're so good to dance with. He was saying the same to me. You know, it just worked. And the week before, I danced with this other guy and. The, the the lead teacher came up and said, it's looking really good, you two. I've never heard him say that to anybody. You know, <laughs> so it was like, what? And That's then, cool. so I had the little round man. I had this other guy that it looked good with. And he's like, he's on the way to the little round man's, <laughs> you know, he's, he's coming along. He'll get there. He'll get it. Um, and then there was this, other one that I've danced with a couple of times, and it's just he does a lot of. Lindy Hop is based on on an eight count or a six count. The easiest step is the six count. The the most normal is the eight count, and he does a lot of six counts, which just they just baffle me because nobody ever does that many six counts, right? right? So it's like I just it, it just doesn't work. And I was telling Dominic this in the session on Monday, saying that it's like, I I don't get it. It's like, here I'm the queen of the dance floor, and then two leads down, I'm just, it's just not working. What am I doing wrong? What's happening, you know? And Dominic was saying, you're not doing anything wrong. You know that your radio is, is active. You know that you can receive, you know? It's not that. You guys are just, you know, it's... It's static. It's just not coming through. You're not on the same wavelength, right? And so he was asking me, what do you feel? It's like, and I can feel it in my body. It is so Uh obviously a no in my body when I'm dancing with a 6'8 guy. It's just a no. It's just doesn't work. And then with these two other guys, it's just, whoa, it's just there. (laughs) So... Dominic was, you know, so what's the signal? What is it that when I was going, well, you know, okay, it's the frequency stuff. And he said, no, it is easier than that. You listen to your body. You will know the no, and you will know the yes. You can feel it. And I'm going, I can. <laughs> and it's a matter of honoring it, right? Yeah. So when that no is there, because, you know, I can get up in my head saying, one, oh man, what have I lost the ability to, you know, all of a sudden I'm not picking up and it's like, there's something wrong with me. And then the other part of me says, there's something wrong with him. And who am I to say that? And I shouldn't be judging because he says that I'm a good, you know, so I, I kind of get trapped in either of these that doesn't yeah. lead me anywhere instead of just okay there's a no in my body or how can i honor that how can i just you know maybe maybe i don't say anything i just listen to myself and not go into the judgment or maybe i'll get better at saying when he actually does lead in a way that works or maybe i can say i would love for you to be a clearer lead could you be clearer yeah. with your yeah. hand Offer or something the feedback. You know, yeah. Precisely, right? Without yeah. kind of saying anything else but but that. So yeah. I love that you are feeling it in the body more. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very strange for me because I've, you know, I've I've lived, you know, most of my life. I'm 60, 60 gonna be sixty one in December. Um I've lived most of my life with my body being a vehicle that I ride around in. You know, my my brain is in here. I use the eyes and the hands a whole lot. I use the mouth probably more than I should. <laughs> I need to use the ears more, uh, you know, whatever. But but it was always like the head and the and the and the hands and the body is just this thing that carries it around. Yeah. And what I've discovered is no, the body has a significant amount of knowledge of its own, a really large amount of knowledge of its own, um, down to some very unusual things like um, there was. Uh, again, this, on these retreats we take, right. I ended up so in tune with myself and with the landscape that, um, you know, and I've, I've talked to you before about this, I've got a, a kind of a relationship with trees 
that's always been there. My, my youngest son refers to me as a closet druid. So <laughs> as a, as a result of this, so there have been experiences I've had up there in some places with certain trees that are powerful. And no, there was a, there was an old, old apple tree in the middle of an ancient orchard up there that we found in the woods. And, um, I just walked up and just touched the tree. I was just thinking, you know, I just putting my hand on the trunk. It nearly knocked me on my ass. I was, I got this jolt of what I now think is probably something like chi, right? The life force itself that I sometimes feel when I do, when I do Tai Chi, when I do Qigong, I sometimes can feel it. Um, I, I think that's what it was. And it was just built up in the trunk. And I just came up and it's like, like a, getting an electrical discharge, like a big spark. I've touched that tree every year since looking to see if there's anything there. Just the one time, just the one time, but man, it was powerful that one time I've walked by a whole grove of tulip poplars, tulip trees here in this area, um, and been able to feel their liveliness on my right, almost like, like heat rating riding off of them. And I was able to, I was able to walk the grove with my eyes closed, the length, the length of the road in front of it and get, find the spot where it was the strongest and open my eyes and look. And I was exactly where the largest tree was with all the smaller ones spread out away from it, like organs, like, like pipes in a pipe organ. It was that kind of a grove like there next to the road. And I was like, yes, you do, you do that. And, um, but I was able to feel it in my chest, in my, in my torso. You know, there's stuff, there's stuff the body knows that we don't let ourselves hear, I think. And so, yeah, I'm experience. super excited, super excited about where some of this could potentially go. Trying to turn it, convert it into images is really difficult because I've got all this art training and all this, you know, the logo side, the word side, it gets in the way. Um, it's really difficult to get it out of the way enough to be okay. And, and then, you know, if I get it completely out of the way, then, then the skills aren't there to do what I need to do with what the body tells me. So it's, it's trying to find a way to let the body steer. It's a way yet, to dance. Well, yeah. 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 Them. It's yes. Yes. I can imagine. Yes. I took, um, I took East coast swing <laughs> lessons with Laura for mm -hmm. about a year. And finally stopped because it just was not, I was not getting it at all, especially not, I cannot focus on the moves and leading. No. Right. That's so why I I'm be, a follower. You should, you should right. try doing oh, well, that's it what as I a told, follower. That's what I just told Laura recently. I was like, cause she, she loves to dance and it's always been a kind of a disappointment for both of us that I'm not, I, I can't dance. I mean, you know, we'd love to dance together, but I just, so I, I just told her recently, it's like, you know what, why don't you lead? Yeah. Try and it. I'll follow and I'll, I'll, maybe I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. maybe we're going to try that. We'll see. We'll see. Do that. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, the little round man that I, that I danced with, he, um, so I danced Tuesday evenings at seven twenty. before that there's a, um, I danced the D class. There's a B class before, and then afterwards there's a D slash E class. So the little round man, he does all three of these. In a row. It, and, you know, I'm after an hour 20, I'm done. All right. And, and he's like, go, going into the second one, he's like, oh, I'm just getting warmed up. Here, right. <laughs> Turns out he's danced a lot. I asked him last night and he's danced a lot and not just Lindy. He loves tango and, you know, he's danced everything. Right. So he's good. But he said, it is re because I was telling him about sometimes I'm sometimes I preempt the lead rather than actually following it. And sometimes it's like, what is it that he's trying to show me? You know, if it's a new move that I haven't seen, I don't, it's not necessarily inherent in it. You know, what am I supposed to do here? So I'll ask him, what was I supposed to do there? Right. And he said, it's really, really good to, to do both of them. So. I'm dancing follower now, and I'll probably continue that a while. And then maybe I will, you know, start over again, do the A course starting as a, as a, a lead. lead. Yeah. 
Cool. So there's some, really, so he, oh, he's great. done. He's done. So there's quite a lot of the, the teachers, there's quite a lot of them that, that do that. They know both. Um, because you get a different, and I'm as going, a as oh a teacher, you have God. to be able to step into either role, right? I mean, you have to be able to show the, the, the follower or the leader that what I love is the fact that, you know, it's, it's always been so gender specific. And I love the fact that that's kind of breaking down yeah, yeah, and it's it like is. whoever, you know, yeah, cause I'm, I'm sure yeah. there's lots of husband, wife yeah. couples where she would be a better lead. <laughs> yeah. you would yeah. expect maybe half the time right she yeah. would probably yeah. be a better lead yeah. and they would probably have a better yeah. time dancing if she led yeah. Yeah. plus it would be interesting to see also i mean do that sign up for a swing course you know with you as the follow and her as the lead but also it would be interesting to see maybe your body will be sending signals to you in a different way than before because you are yeah. in the process that you're in. So maybe yeah. this I can't dance should be a I didn't used to be able to dance. Or I can't or I or I can't lead or I didn't find leading easy or or comfortable Pre for me. So Precisely. maybe maybe that it's because uh, yeah, you might be right. You might be right. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. See yeah. what happens. Because so. it's interesting to to kind of discover what happens at the body and i had another dancing experience two three weeks ago i was i was attending a a day and and there was a live band in the evening starting at a little bit to to 11 and i was so tired before that i was like oh i'll go home and then they started and then i didn't get off the dance floor for two hours <laughs> i was dancing straight on and this was disco dancing so it's like no no partner dancing but i just love it i just love it and i you know i dance i'm not just standing there. i'm all oh, buddy all of it is it's just in it and i just love it so there's something very, very special about dancing that's been really blossoming for me uh, in the past month or two. That's really, that was really great. Of, that is turning, really great. Turning obvious somehow. Oh. That is great. And, and so, so you were tired before it started and then you found yourself dancing for hours, right? Yeah. So it's and like, I didn't, it's I like didn't it pulls break. energy out of you. Yes. Yes. You know, the band breaked after 45 minutes or something saying, you know, we'll come back. You guys go and have a drink of water and whatnot. And they turn on pause music. So I just kept dancing. It was like the, the dance floor was empty and I was still there. So a couple of other people kind of joined me. It's like, cause had I sat down then I would have been too tired, but you know, keep going. And I was so surprised cause I was thinking as I was dancing wildly on the floor, I was thinking my body is going to be so sore tomorrow. Was nothing. it? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> nothing. And I was thinking You got on to be drunk without a hangover. <laughs> yes. And I was thinking, you know, the other day where I was thinking, okay, it's going to come tomorrow. But no, I had no, no feeling of this. And I don't drink either, which probably helps. Right. But I no, it was just, okay, the, there is something. So there's. There's something telling me that I, I should find more opportunities to actually dance because I am in the same quest that you are of this, of, of getting better at picking up on the signals from my body, at, at yeah. noticing, at hearing, at truly yeah. being able to listen to it and kind of, ah, this is what you want. Um, and, and dancing quite apparently is one of those things that my body is saying, this is what I want, mm -hmm. you know, just make sure it happens. Um, so. That's great. It's, that's yeah, great. It's fun. This morning, you know, with the, with the, the light change, of course, as the season gets toward uh, winter time for us here in the Northern hemisphere, um, the yesterday was the first day back at work. No, to, to Monday was the first day back at work. And, uh, so, I, you know, I got up as usual and my, my youngest son and I take a walk at 7 AM every morning. So we, we always, you know, check out where the light is. Part of the walk gets us to see the sunrise a little bit or, you know, wherever the sun is at that point. 
And so I, I, I got up at the usual time and I rolled blinds up in my studio and, and I'm, I'm looking out the window it's right over there and I'm thinking, gosh, it got a lot darker in just two weeks. So this morning, two days later, I'm like, it just, it's just depressing. The dark is just bothering me. So I turned on the lights you saw behind me when I first came on, right? They were so blinding behind me. And I have, I have four more fluorescent bulbs over here. So I had 16 fluorescent bulbs. I'm just turned on every light in the studio. So that's three incandescents and four and 16 fluorescent bulbs. <laughs> and this little 10, you know, 10 by 12 foot room, right? And it was, it was like, wow, they grind in this room. And I could not believe how much more energetic I felt after five minutes. And I'm like, I'm okay, so this is another, I mean, it comes into the eyes, maybe I'm assuming, right? But there's, this is another whole body response to something physical, photons in this case, right? All over the room. Um, and I have just been super energetic all morning. I mean, starting at 5 a.m., um, you know, because, because of that. And I, I've been contrasting it to yesterday and the day before where I had more normal energy. And I'm like... I'll be, I'll be turning these lights on every morning now, yeah. you know, 5 a.m. I'll get up and I'll just turn on all the lights. Yeah, yeah it does make a difference. And it's, it's fascinating, the intelligence of the system that is there. Yes. You know, and it's like, we don't have to, you don't have to tell your body, okay, nope. now body, pick up on these photons, you know, it does nope. that because that's what the system inherently does. Um, it so is it makes cool. me wonder what else? Right? Should I try? Should I try uh, cold water swimming? Should I? Yes, you should. <laughs> yes, you should. Says the Scandinavian. Of course, as you would say, yes. Um, you so should. yeah. So you know, maybe I'll try that. Um, I did an all-day trip uh, to a wilderness area near here a couple of weekends ago before the other uh, big trip. I I just did on one day. Um, I think I mentioned to you guys that I've been trying to think about whether I could get back into backpacking for a solo just to have some time in the woods. Um, I did a day trip to one of the places that was a target potential backpacking spot for me. Um, I was off the trails, just in the woods with a compass for seven hours wow. that day and no people anywhere and deep, deep woods. And it was, it was amazing. And again, just all these feelings that, you know, came up just because of where I was. And some of them I think are, you know, based on things I'm thinking, but many of them I think were just my body picking up on where I was, you know? So one more thing you can do is barefoot. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, you don't have, I mean, I just came from the store. I walked over to the store. It's just a kilometer away, but I walked there, shopped and went back barefoot and it's 14 degrees Celsius outside. So that is 30, um, it's in the sixties. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not that cold. Um, no. oh, yeah. I took, a, I took a walk the other day. It was in the fifties, but. You know, you don't, you know, just go outside, do some barefoot uh, and, you know, try barefoot. I always dance barefoot. Barefoot, yes. <laughs> so I kind of, I kind of knew that was probably a thing, but the outside yeah. barefoot, ah, okay, yeah. okay. Because then, add you, that. then you ground add that. yourself too. Mm -hmm. You, you actually do ground yourself. Oh. Uh, I will, I will also see what, uh, I, sometimes I do my Qigong outside. Um, just really often when the weather's nice. So I'll try that barefoot outside Yes, yes. as well. You That'll should. be good. That'll be good. Okay. What else can you think of other things that are like, you know, body things that I might not be thinking of me who's Breathe. kind of ignored my body for 60 years. Breathing. Yeah. Breathing. Yeah. Breathing yeah. through your nose, not your mouth. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, it's easy things. It's breathing through your nose, period. Right. But then also, where is the tongue in your mouth? Uh-huh. You know, do you let it drop down or is it kind of at the, at the front of your upper teeth? Because then you're pushing forward in a way that's not very good for you. It should be right. dropping down. You know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. The Qigong teaches you a lot of that. You learn, mm -hmm. you learn to breathe through the nose. You learn to really let be, your basically Qigong and Tai Chi are, are done in time with your breathing. Yeah. The moves work with the breath. There are opening moves yeah. and, and closing, closing. moves, yeah. right in and out. And it's all cyclical and it just cycles round and round and round. So, um, and you, you focus on breathing with your glutes relaxed, your pelvis tipped up. So it, your abdominals are somewhat, somewhat tensed. And, um, but you're supposed to breathe in and out as if your belly is getting big under your navel, yeah. below your navel. So, um, that whole, that whole set of focuses when you're, when you begin and try to work and try to keep that focus during the whole course of the routine really makes you think about your breathing and feel, really feel your breathing. So yes. So yes, I, I, I wrote it down as along with the barefoot because being more mindful of breathing at other times too, is, is probably, probably would be instructive. Yeah. And just the fact that, you know, we kind of, we, first we breathe through our mouth too much generally, and then we kind of breathe too often, mm -hmm. you know, breathing somewhere. Precisely. So through your nose, four to six times per minute. That's what you should with, with bunny ears. And, wow. And a lot of people habitually are at 10, 12, 14 times per, cent, per minute. Um, and you just don't get, you know, it's like the system is there. It's, it's there. You just, we're, we're kind of messing with, with a system that, that is designed to work what with shoes, what with modern processed food, you know, which alters the, the actual bone structure in our faces, right? To yeah. a, a worse place than what it's actually designed to be. Um, so yeah. And thought about Things. that, about the face, maybe oh, yeah. face potentially the, you know, all your jaw muscles and everything else all yeah. being different if you're. Yeah. Eating things that don't take and much effort. And not just your jaw, your, your nasal bones, the nasal structure, the, the, the floor or the, the roof of the mouth. You know, there's all well, of that stuff that is impacted by us not chewing enough. Um, but you can, you can actually reverse that. Um, there's a great put with... Uh, James Nestor, who speaks about this, and it's just fascinating. So he had an X-ray made of his his face, and kind of got a um, some type of measurement on the amount of bone that he had in his nasal cavity and nasal mouth cavity, and you know, and then he exercised somehow, started to chew more and breathing exercises and stuff, and you know, in, in half a year, there's more bone. And he's like 50 something. Right, right, right. So not, not super young to be adding bone, right? Most nope. of us don't add bone in our sixties or fifties. No, nope. cause we don't, right? Cause we just continue doing what we're doing. And then we're probably are, are sort of, you know, leaking it out or it's leached out and disappearing instead of actually being regenerated. But there's a lot of things that are, that are cool so, that we can so do. So along those body. same lines. I, um, I, I was not finding bed very restful. I have back issues that were, you know, I would wake up in the morning with my back sore. Or I wouldn't feel like I breathed well during the night or anything like that. So I was curious. It just, it suddenly occurred to me, like more than half the world's population does not sleep in a bed. It's not good for They us. sleep on the floor. They sleep yes. on a mat on the floor. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, well, what would that be like? And so I started experimenting with it. I started experimenting, you know, and so I don't sleep in a bed anymore. I haven't slept in a bed in several years now. I sleep on the floor. I sleep on, a, you, you know, this carpet on the floor. So I'm not sleeping like on concrete or something, but I just sleep on the floor. I still have a pillow, but, uh, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's, if that's what I should get rid of next. But, uh, yeah. but the, but the sleeping on the floor thing's been going on for quite a while now. And I, I just sleep so much better. I love sleeping on the floor. So do you then also, I mean, cause you're standing, right? Yes. I yes. stand all day. So do I you I made that change down? first, actually. That's, that's, I think what led me to think about the bed was 
Well, I got rid of the chair. Yeah. But do you but sit if, down on the floor? Uh, yes, I sit on the floor some too. And that's, that's, yeah. and it, that, that's interesting because when I first started doing that, um, I, I found I couldn't sit on the floor for long. No. You know, if I sat with my legs straight out in front of me, my abdominals yeah. would not hold me up for more than about 10 minutes. Nope. Um, and then I would have to either, you know, get in a different position or, or get up or lay down. One of the, yeah. now, I, now I can sit, you know, 30, 40, 50 minutes right. just fine right. in that L shape if I want to on the floor. Right. Um, I still can't sit Indian fashion very well. My, my ligaments around my knees, I think, are still too tight for that. But I probably yeah. should work at loosening them up. Yes. So because I there's that. a lot of there's a lot of things. I I also have a uh, a little table close to the floor that I use. So I sit down there now and again. Okay, uh, so you actually work. Okay, I work, and you know, it's like I'm deliberately trying to shift my position and how I'm sitting with my legs, and, uh. and just to because it's like it's the hips and it's the knees and it's the also the ankle joints. So you know. Joints are made to to be in movement. You know, they are joints. They're not supposed to be still. They are supposed to be in movement. And we have a such narrow range of movement in our joints in the way that we are. So I still sit on a on a chair, but I'm like sitting at the at the very edge of the chair, and I have some pillows there so that my pelvis is tilted, tipped up, tipped up. Um, because again, at least this is a better place, a better way of sitting than if you're sitting. I, and I see that above. ball behind you. There's a ball behind me. Yes. Yeah. So there's so that's some... another, that's another thing you do is, is sit yeah. on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some, um, there's a lot we can do with our bodies that, and, and there's hanging. <laughs> <laughs> I've got five things on my list now, Helena. Yeah. 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 That, like, that makes total sense because, because that's another, you know, it's, it's an upper body strength thing, but I, I see what you mean. It's a completely yeah. different way to exercise the joints. Yes. And we are this, meant for it. You know, we are meant yes. for not, <laughs> not, we aren't supposed to live in trees, but we are definitely built to climb, climb them and to, you know, be up here. And it's like, when are you ever up here except when you're dancing while disco dancing or climbing a tree, right? It's like right. you just aren't. You can, I can feel it. It's like really, no, you're down here all the time. Um, so hanging, I've been, ex I've, I've, I've bought two or three, you know, like rods. Chin bars, chin bars. Yeah, but I haven't gotten one that's good enough yet. So now I have like, I've spent, I don't know how many thousands of crowns on, on these rubbish ones. I'll just have to get a really good one that fits these old door frames and, and whatnot. So that, you know, cause then you can just kind of hang there for 10 seconds or something. Then you can continue. Um, so <laughs> that's another one. I'm looking around the studio thinking where I could put a bar. Yeah. Well, you'll find so. I mean, I don't know what the what the roof is like, but you can also hang it in the, yeah, in the ceiling yeah, from if the, it's strong from enough. The, yeah, the joists. Yeah, yeah. that's probably that's yeah. probably what I'll do. I'll probably find some way to hang it out the ceiling or something like that into the joists. I am so looking forward to see where this will take you. Be with reshaped shoulders and more bob. Yeah, yeah. From, from and, hanging, and, you know, it's like yeah, it's like just the. The simplest thing. So how do you right? hold your shoulders, right? Yes. Where does your, when you're just standing, where does your fingers land on your thigh? Yes. You yes. know, are yes. they evenly or are they kind of in the front? Because they're right. not supposed to be in the front. No, no. Right? What so, are your knees doing? Are you locking your knees when you stand? That's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, they should yeah. be bent slightly. You should kind of be yeah. bouncing all the time, the whole yeah. time you're standing there. Yeah. You should sort of yeah. be in motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it took a while to learn that. Yeah, precisely. Because I think that's one of the things that many kind of you know, okay, I'll get rid of the chair and I'll stand, and then they stand statically, which is as bad for you as sitting statically for you know a full day. You know, yeah. it is the movement that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. If you don't keep moving, I've, I've had days where I was so focused on work that I did not move enough. And at the end of the day, my ankles are swollen. Yeah, of course. Right? 
because I wasn't, I wasn't moving. And since no. I was, didn't stay in motion, my circulatory system wasn't really working no. as well as no. it should. No. I, no. I, you know, I ended up with fluid, you know, yeah. pulling yeah. pull up in my ankles. So, so of course, because the, the pumping system isn't yeah. activated. Yeah. It's not just your heart. It's all your muscles and everything else. It's the pressure of the whole system on everything, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. So, but Steve, I'm curious. It, and you don't have to answer this, but it's interesting to hear you because I've known you since I've known you a year, I think in the fall yeah, of, year, of year 2020. And yeah. 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 Um, and, and I've seen these, the, the little thingies that you threw on the, um, whatever you call them, the maquettes, no? The, oh yeah. The paper maquettes. The paper maquettes, yeah, you know, so I've seen, I've only known you in this phase of, of what for me looks like a, a, a discovery phase, right? Because you've been playing the, the, the different expressions that I've seen of you in forward laying of, of the art that you do, the creations that you do are just, it's like, it's wildly different. You know, it's like, it, if I didn't know it was you, it's like, I would never have guessed that this is by the same uh -huh. person, right? So for me, it's like, well, that's what you do. But you say that this is something that you started a year, a year and a half ago. So what, what made you want to shake up your arts or whatever with your life? What, what was the, was there kind of a, uh, I don't know, a moment, an insight, something. Yes and no. It wasn't like one moment, but yes, there were some insights. First of all, there was just, there was a kind of ennui with the work, kind of boredom with the work. Mm -hmm. It's like when it's just, it, it's, it stops feeling like art starts feeling more like craft, like I'm not painting a painting. I might as well be making, I might as well be weaving a basket, the same basket I've woven the same shape 500 times. Um, there's some of that. There was also just a, there was a, a feeling over time that became a feeling of, of loss of authenticity, that it, it wasn't, it wasn't coming from the core of me. It was just something I was doing on the surface. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's that, um, there was, uh, just a loss of energy mm. in it all the way around. And the art's been on and off most of my life. It's been, it's been more of a, more of a hobby, more of a, of something I, you know, I do more casually. The last couple of years, it has become much more serious. Um, I don't think I thought of myself as an artist. I wouldn't have called myself an artist, um, up until about two years ago. But what's weird is, and this, this, the other element of it, there was another thing that kind of intersected with all that and made it happen was I began going back and looking at journals and what I would, what I would write. And when I would go back to a journal from 10 or 15 years ago and find myself saying, you know, if I just, if I just let shapes come out and I don't really know where they're going and I just sort of throw paint around, this interesting thing starts to happen. And then I'd be flipping pages through the journal going, when did I, when did I forget that I discovered that and stopped doing it? And in every case, it would be like, you know, I'd make this discovery. I was doing the work this way. And I was like, wait a minute. And then I went back and looked at the last almost, I guess, 15 years since I started, I stopped painting altogether for about 25 years. No artwork at all, really, for about 20 years, 20, 25 years. 2005, I started again. So the last 15, 16 years. So I went back. I was like, let's look at the work chronologically. And there are places where, oh, yeah, these pieces happened that way. So for a couple of months, I was working like that. And then I got all stuck in my head or something and was doing the work much more mechanically, more mm -hmm. intellectually, and wasn't letting the things sort of happen. Mm -hmm. And the work got kind of stale to me and I found myself no longer all that interested and there wasn't as much being done. And it was in, a, a, in some cases I would like stop for two or three months, six months. And then I would be doing something or discover something and I'd be right back to, it's really exciting when. I do this thing and so, you know, getting to a place where this isn't just something I forget, but becomes my mode of, of 
operating, right? It's the way I, it's the way I function now. Um, and so I, I've been gradually pulling together what are kind of gradually becoming a list of like 10 to 15 guidelines for me that will keep much of this in the forefront while I do the work. Um, and the body is at the very top of the list. And then the unexpected and the accidental is next. So, and you know, it's brief look through these. These are ones, these are ones done on the trip, right? So these are all from the last couple of weeks. So I began with, you know, this, this piece began as just a series of lines that it's I wasn't. Viking down. ship. Were, they were, yes, it's very much like a Viking ship. Um, we had seen a, we had seen a, uh, a, 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 co a Gulf fritillary. It's a, a North American mm -hmm. butterfly that's orange and has yep. this kind of pattern on the bottoms yep. of the bottom wings. Yep. It's, 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 it's the most distinguishing feature of the butterfly. We had seen one on a hike in the morning. And as I was drawing this with my left hand, not thinking, just letting my left hand do stuff. My, that's my non-dominant hand. These waves started showing up and these lines here and these pad, these, these shapes. And then just these, some of the vertical lines, that's all. And then, and then I realized, oh, it's going to be a ship. And, you know, it went, it went from there. Um, you know, this, this is another even stranger piece that began also as just a series of lines and became my kind of, you know, my version of the green man, right? The Jack, Jack yeah. of the green, the, guy, the, the man who's made of all leaves, only in this case, he's more made out of flower petals, but, and, and maybe an onion. <laughs> so, cool. I, so, you know, and I just, you know, some of them, some of them don't, don't turn into anything quite so recognizable. This is may, maybe a manatee. I don't know. It looks like a manatee. That's what I would say. It's, it's on I, the verge I, of being you know, a manatee. Some of, them, some of them don't ever, ever, ever become anything all that recognizable, well, but they're all, these are all just, you know, me playing around. So then I, I brought, I brought this, I have, I have my grandfather. My grandfather was also a, a, a closet artist. Um, very, very quiet man. And, um, he had this, he had this box of old Crayola crayons, the old original box of 48, the pop, the top opens up. Right. I, I now have those crayons. I have his crayons, right? So these are, these are crayons he probably bought in like the 1950s. And, um, so I began playing around with them doing, doing resists. So I was doing the orange and yellow and the, the all the lines on here, the, the blue green lines up here, those are crayons. I'm just scribbling with crayon with my left hand. And then my right hand, I just take the paintbrush and I'm taking watercolors yeah. and I'm just putting them on over it. And it's like, Ooh, isn't it cool the way the yellow just yeah. shows up, up sort of sharply? Yeah. No. So I just, I just got kind of wilder and wilder as the, as the trip went on. I was just, you know, letting myself get, get sort of crazy with, you know, what am I, what am I drawing? What am I doing? And so it's just, it's just been a lot of fun. And then, then I was like, all right, all right, let's reel it back in a little bit. I, I bring a, I, I don't have any internet up there, so I can't look at photos of things. I have several notebooks that I've been pasting, taping photographs in of various kinds for years. I call them my photo morgues. So I, I always bring a couple of those along. So I, you know, I was looking up, looking up some oh, frogs and playing around with that. So this is all resist as well. The orange and yellow lines are all resist. So, you know, it's, this is so much more interesting and exciting. This is, this is, this is a piece done based completely on dance one morning. It's what all a based powerful on dance. Way. These were all, these, these motions were all from something that was going on in the dance mm -hmm. itself. And this is, this, this light colored green tier is crayon resist again, crayon, wa crayon wax, and then the watercolor is put on after it. This whole thing probably took maybe 15 minutes. Cause that's right. what I was going to ask. Is it like, is, is it, is it one, one sheet a day or is it like. It tends to be one or two when I'm on vacation, it tends to be one or two of these a day, you know, and they're not all, they're not all that on plan. Some of them, this one, this one took, this one took several days because this was laid out carefully in paper and then was. And and then was, you know, played with and played with in pencil, just the pencil lines for a long time before I got exactly how I wanted the shapes to interact, how I wanted the words to come out, how I wanted the, you know, the, the bear feet. to be done. The right. Feet. So, so yeah. it's, 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 but that one's more, that one's more head. 
than the others. The others are more, more spontaneous, more body. So, so for, for the people who are actually not watching this, can you send me a picture of one or two or three of those? Oh yeah. I'll send you, I'll send you. Yeah. I can send you pictures of those. Yeah. Sure. Cause then I yeah, can they're all, they're all already them photographed. in the, they're all already photographed. I photographed them on the trip. So I, yeah. I just, I'll just, I'll just email you the, email you yeah. the images. And can do yeah, it, do that. Cause then I can put them in the, in the, in yeah. the pod show notes so that people yeah. can, can, can watch it and see it. Yeah. What it is that you're, you're doing. Yeah. Um, but so there's a, there's a, there's a thread in you now. Of, of kind of not wanting to let go of this discovery Knowledge. of the body. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's now gotten to a place where for, for a while it was a thing I knew that would, that would work sometimes or that might be a thing. And then I would forget about it a month later. Right. Yeah. And it, it got to a place where it's like, okay, well, this is just, this is just another tool in my toolkit and I would mm. forget about it, but it would just be like one of six or seven different ways I could work. It's now gradually, be, I'm beginning to realize, no, in a lot of ways, it's really the, it's really the only place to start. Yeah. I may, I may bring everything to bear, all the skill, all the training and education, because I did go to art school for a while. Yeah. Um, all of the, all of the, the, you know, more, um, classical training on how to, how to draw, how to paint, right? I could bring all that to bear at some point in the process, but it should not start there mm -hmm. because, and that's, and getting all the way back to Lewis Hyde and the gift again, right? The, the logos approach is distancing yeah. by its very nature. It just, it just is anything, anything analytical, um, chops up, yeah. divides it, it, it's, I mean, analysis is it's at its roots, right? It's about breaking things yeah. apart, breaking them yeah. down into their component yeah. pieces and understanding yeah. it. It's, yeah. it's taking the clock apart to understand yeah. how it worked. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's naturally distancing. Whereas the, the body approach, the Eros approach is naturally joining. It's naturally unifying. And as I've done more Qigong and read more about yoga and looked into more Buddhism and other things. The one thing that seems common in almost all of these points of view is the idea that the idea that I'm me and everything else is something else is false yeah. and that it's really all one thing. And we have perhaps a unique perspective in that everything, right? It is what makes us different than everyone else, but we're not really separate and Beginning to discover how all of this comes together and being fi finding ways to be more unified, more connected. You now, whether it's to trees or the weather or my body or other people's bodies or the floor that I sleep on or, you know, whatever. Um, and the art works the same way. If I don't do it in ways that, that unify, it just, it just feels stale. No spices, <laughs> right? Boring. Um, and so, yes, it's, it's, it's gradually risen from something I could barely remember or would only remember like once a year. It's, it's just risen in importance to where it's now, now it's like, you know, yeah, this it's is filling this you is, up. This is, this is rule one. Rule one is take off your shoes and dance around the studio first and then figure out what you want to do. Don't. It's not something to bring on later or only sometimes it should be. Yeah. More. And it's, and it's, it's reminding me of one of the things that Alan seal, who's a master coach that I, I trained with 10 years ago. Um, he speaks a lot about what wants to happen, you know, and letting what wants to happen actually to happen, not what do I want to happen, but what wants to happen. And there's an opening, there's an invitation there for mm -hmm. kind of all of those energies that are dancing around to, you know, to show up, to pop up, to say, what about this squiggly little yellow line? You know, cause that's what wanted to happen. Uh, and, and, you know, 
control free culture. That's a scary. Okay. Right? He's like, what do you mean? What wants to happen? I need this, 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 and you have to do that and that and the other thing. And we need to get okay. those two at that time. You know, it's like, but what if we don't, you know, what if, what wants to happen? Yeah. And I think to a large extent, this last year and a half, what I have grown to understand is that I'm not interested in doing this work alone. I am far more interested in doing this work when the, what wants to happen comes to play. Precisely. Right. And when it is a dance. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's a dance. It's, it's like the Lindy it's, it's push and pull and it's understanding and seeing and hearing the signals, you know, the landscape behind me, it's maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you could see it as a landscape, but that's what it is. It's a hill. There's a bunch of bushes in an orchard kind of arrangement going up that hill. There's some fields over here. There's a road coming out of the field, right? An old, yeah. old road with two ruts, right? I, I painted, put this up there because I was fascinated by the landscape itself, by the shape of the landscape, the feeling of the distance and the, the bulge of the hill. And that's always been something that gets me. So I, I'm just like, all right, let's, all right, let's paint one. So I put it up there. And now after doing that and trying to chalk outlines of these individual trees in these orchard rows. No, they're not, they're not just going to be trees. Helena. They're all, they're all bears. They will be all bears coming down the hill. I have had to draw a mess of bears because I don't know how to really draw bears. I've only drawn a few. Yes, you do. Right? You do. Well, you, you have a couple of, you have a couple of my bears, but you know, they took and forever to draw. But and they're, they, they're they, going to come up on that wall behind us. So they, before... took, they took shape. They took shape very gradually, but I had to do, I've had to do a bunch of thumbnails oh. of bears because I'm going to need all these different bear postures oh. on this thing. Hi, mate. There's going to be probably 24 bears. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, but that's, that's, that's the dance. That's the, you know, even this piece, it did not start primarily as a, spontaneous thing it's it's based on a photograph right so it's 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 laid out in using classical techniques um but then it decided to go where it wants to go yep and that's the what wants to happen here yes yes yeah it's a beautiful place to to come to a place where you are again i would say in yeah. in attunement with that because Young kids are like, you know, they yes. kind of do that, right? Yes. But then we kind of step out of it and then here we are again, back on. Wow. I have in my depth work, my depth psychology work that I've been doing, the IFS work, I've been pushed over and over again to re-examine what it is I lost after fourth grade, after age 10. Um. And I have not been able to figure out what it is. I've been looking and trying to figure it out, but things, things guide me back over and over again to that spot in my life and said, you need to think about this. This is a turning point. What, what, what from before do you need to recover? And you may have just given me the ingredient I was missing, which is, um, that spontaneity, that yeah. physical spontaneity, um, and that knowledge that physical, that the, the, you know, the, the, was I more in my body at age 10? I have to believe I was. Yes, is that when I, is that when I first started thinking of my body as a vehicle for my head? Possibly. And it's interesting. I have a, I'm just, I have a story of a, an artist up in, in Värmland where I used to live further up north in, in Sweden, not that far, but compared to where I am far, um, amazing artist she she uses nature and and she does she paints and she does sculptures and just it's just amazing the things that she does we were there visiting her and she lives in this gorgeous place and she's built her studio from wood from the land that she's on you know it's just drop dead gorgeous she wow. said I'm interested in people below the age of 10 
if kids come here and they're 10 or older, they're no fun anymore. Below the age of 10, oh, you can do anything with kids. They will give yes. you anything. But after that, you know, because she was having us paint and stuff, she said, after the age of 10, people know you're supposed to paint within the frame and stuff like that, right? And it's, she said, it's just boring. It's just boring. It doesn't interest me at all. Give me, give me under 10 and I'm on there. So I think that is actually something that might just, at least it's an entryway, something to, to look at. Yeah. 